What's going on everyone? We are at that one year with using the Raspberry Pi as a desktop. And now it's time to take a look and see how our day nine results and our one day results that we previously tested and see if they actually uh, can compare. So without further ado, let's go through the slides here. Here we go. Power consumption, one year results on the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop. So that's right, I've used the Raspberry Pi 4 for a complete year as my day-to-day -day desktop. And I want to say it's been uh, definitely an eye-opener when it comes to what I can do and what the results I got out of the power consumption here. So let's go ahead. We're going to hit the first slide here. So power consumption tests. These are previous tests that I ran. Now, previously I did my current PC, the Pi 2 running with a mechanical drive, the Pi 3 stock, and then like a Pi 3 uh, B plus with three external drives on it. Uh, and it could have been just all USB powered, or I think there was one that was powered as well in there. Uh, but everything kind of all in one, on one power supply anyways, to get that full, uh, actual uh, result there. Now we're just gonna have a quick look here and one thing I want you guys to realize is these results are pretty bang on. Uh, now I've had a few people uh, say I was reading my meter wrong, I was doing my my power consumption wrong, but I assure you I entered everything into the Kumin power meter absolutely fine. That's what I pay per kilowatt hour on my home. There's two different tiers. One is eight and one is 12. So I went in the middle at 10. So here we are uh, looking at those costs per year. Looking at these results, 262.80 to run my, my main PC, like a desktop everyone has. It costs a lot of money to use them. So what if you are just someone that wants to surf the internet uh, watch some YouTube, maybe some Netflix, you know, uh, do a little bit of uh, homework or whatever you want, that kind of nothing hardcore gaming related. You could save yourself a lot of money by not getting a big desktop computer. Now, as us older people, that's what we grew up with and that's what we tend to buy. Uh, I'm not speaking for everyone, but uh, you know, we you know we'll get a laptop and this and that but we will also have a main desktop and that's just due to the if we need to get something done it is right there it's got the power to do what we want be for gaming or for you know doing uh you know any sort of modeling or rendering of any sort or even video editing uh now the raspberry pi does a phenomenal job in a lot of areas sure you're not going to be playing you know the top end games like fortnite and everything on it yet but um there is a lot that you can do with the raspberry pi as a desktop you're waking up in the morning you sit down at your computer you're having your coffee you're checking your email, you're checking your feeds for social media, whatever you're doing, it's a great unit for that. And you can still play games on it. As you can see over the last year, I've done some gaming videos on the Raspberry Pi 4. When I first started this project, I wanted to get the full uh, amount of power consumption throughout the entire year and this includes me updating uh, my Raspberry Pis. I started with the 2 gigabyte then I went to the 4 and now I'm on the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 and you know I would still be happy with the 2 gig or the 4 gig but I was lucky enough and uh, I scored one on the release night of uh, for the Pi 4 8 gigabyte so when it comes down to, um, do you need, uh, you know, an eight gig model to use as a desktop? No, you don't. A four gig will do absolutely fine. You know, the two, the two gig, you're still going to be doing fine. Uh, the one gig, I wouldn't really bother with it. I'd probably use that as, uh, maybe like a, a kiosk, uh, display for advertisements or something like that or some lower end projects 
that don't require a lot of RAM. So nothing with a, a desktop environment, a little web server, that kind of a thing. Let's have a little bit of a look here. So if we look at the actual cost running, see when I do my calculations, I'm running it at as if I was using it for a 12 hour duration uh, on these tests here. I did my uh, test for this one uh, for the full year. I did it as the full year. The Raspberry Pi was always on. Uh, the, the, when the monitor's on, it's you know detecting that. If it's in sleep mode, it's pulling the power consumption from that or hard drives. Everything is all included, but you won't get that on this page here. So previously I did have uh, my main PC, which is now outdated by a long shot. Um, and it to me makes no sense to run a computer with those specs because it's I, I can do most of that on the Raspberry Pi and I had a failing motherboard uh, so I just decided you know what I'll wait to update my computer because I want to use the Raspberry Pi and give it that full attention that it deserves okay so when I first started this I did that you know nine days that I did these tests with so I did start on September 11th 2019 uh, but this was my current setup as of the 20th of September, 2019. I had the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte. I had uh, my hacked up Raspberry Pi 3 case, uh, which I fit the five volt fan on. The fan's not that loud. You guys might be hearing it right now, but it's not that bad when you're actually watching a video or doing things that you get used to it. It's a small price to pay. Um, I definitely want to add a temperature controller on it to be able to uh, kind of, uh, when it's idle, be able to uh, power down the fans a bit. So when I first started, I also only used a single monitor with a built-in speaker that had, uh, that was the ViewSonic VS11444. And I had my Logitech 920 camera, uh, the Behringer uh, Q502 USB mixer, and then connected to that, I'm using a newer NW700, which you're hearing right now um, as I'm recording. I have a USB Insignia 5 volt 4 amp powered hub, and then I'm just rocking a nice easy Logitech uh, K235 and the M170. Uh, and just a note, uh, Mixer webcam were originally on my main PC before being hooked up to the Raspberry Pi 4. So that means everything I did prior uh, for recording uh, would have been through my main computer, not through the Raspberry Pi itself. So let's skip forward here. So back then we did a test here of what my kilowatt hours at that time were for each test and what my low wattage and what my high wattage was. That's quite a difference. That's almost 400 watts. Well, it is 400 watts and a little bit higher peak um, wattage usage. So as you can see in a 24 hour period, it would cost me 72 cents to run my main computer. And that's with the monitors, uh, everything else connected to it and everything inside it. That's everything. And for the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop, that setup we just discussed, it would only cost me three cents a day. Well, seven cents every two days or whatever it'd be. Uh, you know, that is pretty darn good. In nine days, you know, you're taking my main computer at $6.48 versus that 32 cents. And ultimately looking at that result for the 30 and the yearly rate is pretty substantial as well. So now we go on to my current Raspberry Pi 4 desktop. As of September 9th, this is what I had uh, before the uh, 11th of uh, this month, just to kind of get this all ready to go. I have my Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. I'm running that same hacked up uh, Raspberry Pi case with the 5 volt fan. 
I have uh, upgraded the hard drive uh, to have the uh, 250 gig Samsung Evo SSD drive as my main boot drive. And then I have my 120 gig uh, Kingston SSD drive that originally was on it as now my backup drive for any important documents, things that I want to make sure I save. And then we have an Element LCD TV and I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go with a TV as a monitor, but after uh, looking at that 12 watt power consumption, it's 12 volts, one amp. So that's gonna equal our 12 watts of power consumption right there. Now, comparing that to the other monitor, once again, it was a no brainer. I was saving a lot of energy so that way I could hook up a lot more stuff so other than that we still have that uh so that logitech 920 webcam hooked up to it but right now i am running my canon uh t6i uh, as well uh, and i'm using my logitech more for a down camera or another angle depends where i want to put it so other than that, we have the Sound Blaster uh, Extra G uh, USB sound card that I'm using now due to all the issues I was having with the sound. If you followed along, you'll know it's been a battle and hopefully something comes up with a fix that we can kind of get that isolated and be able to run audio flawlessly through all our application. Still running that uh, 5 volt 4 amp insignia uh, hub same mouse same keyboard uh, but I have now added an M audio AV32 speakers to it which is definitely uh, a lot better when it comes to editing videos and doing uh, anything when it comes to uh, watching movies or anything I just get a much more better sound all in all for the price it was under uh, they're under 100 bucks now but uh, i did steal these from my kid so the one you've all been waiting for is that one year result so let's get on it right now if you haven't hit that like button make sure to do so now if you haven't hit that subscribe button what are you waiting for as you can see i have my two results here one for that nine day result and basically breaking it down in a 24 hour period uh for the cost uh, and because that's what I'm doing. I'm running the Raspberry Pi for uh, 24 hours a day for the 365 days a year. So when we first started, we w assumed that basically it's going to, if I kept that current setup, it would cost me that three cents per day. How close was I from figuring it out with uh, getting my data from a nine day result? Right off the bat, we want to look at that cost per year and see how close I was going from that nine day results to the one year results and uh, being able to figure out the 30, the nine days and the 24 hour rates. For the Pi 4, for the one year, 24 hours a day test of me using it daily as my main desktop, uh, it cost me $14.49 to run everything. That's all the equipment that I said I had on and you know that's going through the changes as well and it will probably cost you less I was doing some running with uh, boink and um, some mining on it and you know using that CPU and getting it to work as well so it did get a, a really good workout throughout the whole entire year from that my results that I thought we're going to be based on my nine day results was 1314. That's not bad. It's only a dollar 35 difference and break it down. You know, that's 11 cents more a month, more or less, right? When you look at the numbers of even my high point was 186.4 watt. Like I had lots of stuff on and powered up and running uh when i was doing that i had uh just kind of wanted to unload uh, as much power to you know the unit to kind of see ultimately if i had everything running what would my highest wattage be and that's you know 
my blu-ray drive on it my you know all my cameras uh, i even had uh dual monitors going for quite a while throughout the year as well so we were getting more uh, power consumption and that's another thing this is based on me just using it as a one monitor system but then halfway through i used it for two monitors and just kind of broke it up a little bit and right now i'm back to one monitor because i just find i don't need to i usually uh, am good with just the one monitor but having two monitors is great when you're uh, working on things and you need one for research that kind of a thing as you can see yeah the low is 0.1 watt but that didn't change because that's still the lowest from the nine days and didn't drop lower than that yeah so you can see here even you know cost for that 24 hours i predicted it's just going to cost under four cents and basically that's what it cost uh was that basically if you rounded everything up you would have gotten the same kind of result in the end if we went with cost per day at four cents a day we would be fourteen dollars and sixty cents for the entire year uh, if we based it on that so if we were under then great so the main thing I want you'd get out of this is using a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop is a nice lightweight unit and if you've looked at my other videos you can see you can accomplish a ton of things on it from video watching music all that kind of a scenario you, you're not just limited to using open office and uh, browsing Facebook or, you know, just simple little tasks. And um, you're able to do so much more in such a little package compared to um, and, and save that money uh, for power. So if you decided, yeah, you know, I could use something like this, you know, use that money that I, I save on power for more um, items like a new monitor or new mouse and keyboard. It's something that you can add to your Raspberry Pi setup versus just dumping it into a service that you have to pay for. Uh, so with that being said, you could definitely generate $14.60 worth of power every year. No problem if you had a couple solar panels. You wouldn't even have to pay for your power. That kind of a thing. So but just by using a single board computer to be able to do the things that is this powerful compared to a lot of older technology that i had where it would consume a ton and ton of power so going forward i definitely will still be using the raspberry pi 4 uh, as a desktop unit but i want to now that i've used uh the main Raspberry Pi operating system. I want to expand and play with some other operating systems on it and uh, kind of uh, get more into those, even though I love the environment uh, for uh, the Raspberry Pi OS. But with that all being said, that is it for me today. Thank you for watching everyone. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?